why wouldn't it permeate the media? And why wouldn't it permeate the delivery information mechanisms? And here's the more important thing. What incentive would they ever have to correct it? When people say we have a systemically racist culture, no, we have a, we have a hoax culture. Yeah. We have a dishonesty culture, right? Um, we have people, there's, there's the court of public opinion, and then there's the courts. And by the way, that assumes that you get a non-corrupt judge, or that assumes that, let's say, the intelligence community hasn't stacked the, against, uh, the deck against you, which also takes place. Yeah. I mean, where do you go and find justice if you know what's going on at the CIA and the FBI? You know what, how it's politicized, and you happen to be in a county where the judge is blue. So, but even in those instances where things were found to be false, right, against, in, the, in the courts, the court of public opinion didn't change. Why? Because the lie travels faster than the truth. So let's go through some examples that you may have forgotten. Jesse Smollett. You probably remember. Well, with him, you probably remember what actually what happened idiot. because it was so it was so clear, right? Yeah. Bubba Wallace. You remember obviously what happened with NASCAR and Wallace and that's one of those a things. noose. That's yeah. called a garage pull, but okay. <laughs> but those are important because <laughs> guess what? You did the job. I, I've been here long enough. Uh, when the show was small, you know, it was in my den and then in my garage and then in what used to be an old dirty massage parlor to where we are now. We're back in the day. There wasn't enough. Uh, of an ability to fight back against, for example, the Michael Brown hands up, don't shoot. Right. There wasn't enough of an ability to fight back against Mattress Girl. We would cover it, but there weren't enough people. But then it changed where you had people like Jesse Smollett, Bubba Wallace, because by that point, CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, New York Post, right, Washington Post had done this and you switched spots, which is why they're now going after big tech yeah. because you know those. Well, and by the way, on the Bubba Wallace story, if, if and fact check me if I'm wrong, what did they send? Nine FBI agents? Yes. Out to investigate? <laughs> That's more than went to investigate the sexual assault claims against Michigan State's Nasser. What's right. his name? But less more than people. were involved in the fake kidnapping yeah. plot the, of Governor also Whitmer. Less. Yeah, and, and there's probably an equal number that tried to kind of stage something in Washington, D.C. They were all dressed in the same uniform that yeah. one day. I can't remember what the protest was. Right, the yeah. Liberty protesters. We call them like glowworms. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's about an equal number there. But you may not remember the BYU race heckler. Right, remember there was a black volleyball player heckled by racial slurs. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But then there was a view of the game footage. Nothing ever occurred. Well, hey, she meant it. Right. Yeah. She thought it. <laughs> you probably remember if I say mattress girl. Right. You remember mattress girl? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Accused a male student of raping at Columbia University. Carried a mattress everywhere. Right, like it was a cross, even to graduation. It was a but, twin size, though. So. But let me ask you this. The person whose life was destroyed, do you remember his name? That's not even easy to pronounce. Paul Nungesser? Does that mean he... No, no. Mattress Girl, great story. Sexy, good picture. The man who was never prosecuted, the man who did not get to... Or young man, student, who didn't get to attend his own graduation, the man who, by the way, afterward, the university had... To, they had to settle with him after a yeah. three-year legal battle. Do you know his name? No, Mattress Girl was a story. Right. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you even heard that it was false at some point in time. Paul Nungi, sir, if I'm getting the name wrong, forgive me, never got his name cleared. That will follow him for the rest of his life. Just like Morgan Bettinger. She will go for the rest of her life to some job interviews. And even, even though she's innocent and she's been proven, they'll go, I just don't want to, you know, we don't want to handle it. Hey, remember the UVA gang rape hoax? You probably remember, right? Jackie was a UVA student who was gang raped at a fraternity. And you may even remember that it was false. Do you remember the names of the men who were accused? Do you know what happened to their lives? Do you care? Do you think Rolling Stone, who had to settle with a fraternity and have, had to retract the story, do you think they care? What about the Duke lacrosse players, right? You remember that? Yeah, jeez. Stripper accused the Duke lacrosse players of rip. Now, you probably know that it's false. Do you remember the names? Do you remember the names of the men who were falsely accused? The charges were dropped against all three. And this is rare. This is one where the only reason you know it's false is because ESPN did a huge story about it. Right. Let everybody know that this was false. Years after it was Years after. false. Again, there's the court of public opinion, and then there are the courts, which, by the way, do all, also don't always serve justice. You remember the name Michael Brown. This is a big one, mm. right? Hands yeah. up, don't shoot. Genuine question. Some of you, how many Americans do you think remember the name Darren Wilson? 
Wilson shot, not only shot Brown during a struggle, Wilson was not only found not guilty. You don't know this about Darren Wilson. Darren Wilson, the police officer, hands up, don't shoot, who was being punched, who was having his gun reached for that day. Darren Wilson actually had a pretty easy beat in the neighborhood, and he said, you know what, actually, I want to go down to a tougher area of town because black people there don't trust white cops, and we need to improve this here in Missouri. Yeah. He, he wanted to reach out to the community, and he was actually pretty well liked by the community. How many Americans know the name of Darren Wilson? Now, Nick Sandman, you know because you follow this show, but it was a picture. Let's bring up that picture, if we can, of the smug white boy, right, who was out there smiling in the face of, uh, of, of, of black guys. Let's just, black, whatever it is, black people, doesn't really matter. Black Hebrew Israelites who hate all white people say that you can't go to heaven, whatever. He was, he was smiling and black, he was wearing a MAGA hat. Remember he called other people, they alleged racial slurs, when in fact they were calling him White cracker, right? The F faggot is what he was being referred to. Remember Nathan Phillips? Turns out he was a professional protester, that toothless meth head meth who head, yeah, claims yeah, to be yeah, Native yes. American who shows up with his drum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kid, Nick Salmon, <laughs> defamation settlements. He's won them with CNN, NBC, Washington Post. And by the way, this is still he, Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. You still have people out there, Kyle Rittenhouse, who want to murder that kid. Doesn't matter what happened in court. Johnny Depp's life was ruined for six years of his life. Yeah. Because he had to white knight it and not actually tell you that a bottle was... And by the way, alcohol problem? Sure. A little weird? Sure. Yeah. Does he walk around with 19 bracelets like he's the little rotating bin and Hot Topic? Yep. yep. Doesn't make him a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> and you never get that back, by the way. You never get it back. And by the way, it's still happening right now. You just saw it happen with James O'Keefe. And full disclosure, okay, I have g conflicting interest with knowing some of these people, so I understand it. Don't take what I'm saying uh, as completely objective. Like, James O'Keefe has been on the show. I have had pl pleasant interactions with James O'Keefe. We're not close friends. But James O'Keefe, James O'Keefe doesn't get to clear his name. The media, you think the media is ever going to clear his name? Tucker Carlson, this is happening with him right now. Yeah. yeah. This is happening with Tucker Carlson right now with someone he never even met. And that's not going to be corrected down the line. Alex Jones, what you know about the Alex Jones case? Sure, Alex Jones screwed up. He admitted that he screwed up and apologized a long time ago regarding Sandy Hook. He did. But what you think about the case is not what was actually brought out in the case, just to be clear. It's the agreed upon lie where people think, oh, no, we must, what we must be hearing is, is, is true of right. Tucker Carlson. Or we must have heard at UVA with Bryant is true. I just want you to go back through, and this is something we've all had to live through, right? And this is why as it leads up to this next election. Do um, you think it's happened since that we were banned before the last election? <laughs> no. And it was happened since that we were banned because of the election before that, because of covering the election. Do uh, you think it's happened since that Tucker Carlson is going to probably become a monster off of Fox News far bigger than mm. when he was on Fox News? And these stories are coming out yeah. that don't even involve people that he's met? No, absolutely not. If you know that it permeates obviously the White House, and you know that orders are sent out to big tech organizations, if you know that it permeates the science community, where they tell you, trust the science, not any of the other science that is currently available that flies in the face. If you know that it permeates all of those, why wouldn't it permeate the media? And why wouldn't it permeate the delivery information mechanisms? And here's the more important thing. What incentive would they ever have to correct it? What incentive would Fauci ever have to come out and say, I was wrong? What incentive... Would, people, would doctors who performed countless sex change operations on children, what incentive would they ever have to come out and say, I was wrong, this caused irreparable harm? What incentive would newspapers, would ABC, NBC, CBS, what incentive would they have to come out and say, we made up that shit about whoever it is that day, Tucker Carlson. Sorry, we labeled a Tea Party racist. Turns out it wasn't. Yeah, you know what? We were wrong. We said peaceful protest turns out billions of dollars in damages. If you know that it permeates intelligence communities, the White House, it permeates science, it permeates your very own doctor's office, why wouldn't it permeate media? And of course, big tech, we're kind of one and the same. And if there's no incentive for these other establishments that you mistrust, the institutions, it's your fault. What incentive would the media and what incentive would these tech organizations have to correct themselves and tell you the truth when the lie has already traveled quickly and they already have the focus group saying, ooh, people like the lie. The problem is the lie, particularly a lie based on this victim status culture on identity politics creates actual victims. And we don't know. We don't know the truth about what's going on right now with a lot of other people. What we do know is, hey, Kyle Rittenhouse, sorry. You deserve better. Hey, Nick Sandman, sorry. 
You deserve better. Hey, Darren Wilson, sorry. You deserved better. Hey, Morgan Bettinger, big time sorry. You certainly deserved better. You're never going to hear that in the media, and you're never going to see that amplified on big tech unless you do your job and ensure it. Watch Louder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.